Katrina, this uh, Outland finale just knocked me out. I, I don't know the books. I don't know the story. So the three big reveals in this finale from the rape of Jamie to his response to that rape and then the baby bombshell at the end. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> what a way to go out of uh, a very I mean, interesting... We, we thought we'd try and pack as much into the last step as we could, you know. <laughs> well, uh, talk about shooting that whole episode. That had to be extraordinary. Yeah. I mean, they, you know, we, we shot 15 and 16 together, so it was, um, you know, it was, it was very heavy stuff, but I think, you know, as, as actors, we all kind of relish the challenges. Um, but it was, it was funny, it was, you know, Tobias and Sam had about, uh, you know, a week's rehearsal with a lot of their more intense stuff, and, and as that was going on, I was sort of shooting the end of Eps 13 and 14, and I was living in, in the traveling circus <laughs> land, I think, and they were sort of concentrating on that. So um, I think they had a little bit of time to sort of get ready to get in that mindset. But um, I remember when we switched over from one block to the next, it was just, you know, it was just really intense. And it was, you know, it was a great place to bring the characters, though. You know, so much changes for Claire and Jamie's relationship and so much changes for Claire. And it was just, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was very challenging material, but it was really a nice place to go. The big jaw dropper, of course, in that uh, episode, aside from the baby news at the end, for those of us who didn't know it, uh, is... Jamie's revelation to Claire that uh, that that there was a moment when he actually liked the uh, the rape and and that he considered that the great betrayal of Claire and and um, it, just talk about your own insight into that because that that delves into all kinds of interesting psychological layers that we don't normally see in a TV show this kind of kind of brutal sexual honesty and then and then here's this 1945 woman transported back to the 18th century and, you, and, and to see the reaction through your eyes and your characters I'd just like to know your point of view on all of that well I think you know this was the great this sort of genius of of Blackjack was to poison the one safe haven that Jamie really had and you know I think he was able to very clearly pinpoint that there was something you know very intense and and you know metaphysical about their relationship and that the love that they have for each other is is something quite extraordinary and when he poisons that and when he brings Jamie to a place of of complete just despair and the only way to sort of get through it is, is to in some way, I don't know, I guess he, he had to in, enjoy some aspect of it. Um, but, you know, I think for Claire, it, it just breaks her heart. And I think, you know, to play that is, is to see someone that you love and to see them be so utterly destroyed and, and whatever about the abuse that he suffered, it's also, you know, how he's, how he feels about himself and how he's unable to forgive himself. And that, that is just the worst thing that she could ever see in him. You know, it's, it's, it, it just breaks her heart completely. And, and I think that, you know, it's a real testament to how strong their love is and, and to, you know, to realize that nothing could ever really break the bond that they've formed, but it's also she had to realize that uh, this is a totally new landscape for both of them. And is that my bell? <laughs> no, that's my stupid phone. I didn't turn it off. Well, you know, something almost broke the bond between them, and that was that that one night you go to the Stones and you and you almost go back to 1945, assuming that your contact with the Stones would take you there, and that was a very interesting uh, moment because. Up until she confronts that stone, Claire really wants to go. And all of a sudden, she, uh, we don't actually see her pull back. We see the next, which I find a fascinating part of the, of the shooting of that scene. Uh, we then see her by the fire with Jamie that she has decided to stay. Why do you think she decided suddenly to stay? Well, I think when she runs for the stones and when she makes that break, it's it's like an instinctual thing. You know, I think so much of her journey up until that point had been this singular focus to get back to that time and to get back home and to get back to the world as she knows it. 
Um, so when she sees them in front of her by accident and, and when that's sort of just placed before her, it's 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 almost like she doesn't think about it. I'm well, sorry, I'm a bit confusing things. Are you talking about when Jamie brings her back and the decision that she makes then, or yeah? Um, sorry, I'm confusing. Yes, it. yes, um, exactly, exactly what I'm talking. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, when Jamie brings her back, um, I mean, I'm not sure that it's you know. I think it had to be a difficult decision. I mean, I think that even though. I mean, at that point, she had not told Jamie everything. So I think there was still a part of her that she was holding back. And I think until you've fully given yourself over to someone and being completely honest with someone, you can't really, you know, it, it's the bond's not fully formed. So I think at that point, there was still this, this debate within her about, well, what was her choice going to be? I mean, do you leave everything you've known in the world that you know for for this man or or you know do you do you sacrifice everything and you know that's that's a big ask of someone you know and, and claire is such a an independent woman to to give up everything she'd kind of known you know it was, it was a difficult decision but i think at the end of the day you know she couldn't live without him so you know that was her choice uh let's talk